Hello, you're watching Avenue X, and today let's talk about a finished airing two months ago, but I finally managed to catch up with it drama. 模仿犯 copycat killer. This is a Netflix drama series that is produced in Taiwan, and it went live online at the very end of March on the 31st. It's 10 episodes long, each episode 55 minutes, so it's a pretty suitable for you to binge it in one day drama. It is directed by. Zhang Longji and Zhang Hengru, adapted by the scriptwriter Ma Keming, based on an existing Japanese detective murder crime novel by the very famous writer Gong Bu Meixue. That's how her name gets pronounced in Chinese. In Roman alphabet, it would be Miyuki Miyabe. Sorry about the pronunciation, not an expert in that. It is led by Wu Kangren, Tuo Zhonghua, Jiang Yirong as the three characters who have most screen time. Then it also features Yao Chunyao. Fan Shaoxun, Lin Xinru, Ke Jiayan. If you watch any dramas from Taiwan, you will not be unfamiliar with any of their faces, particularly this year. I've heard about this drama already while I was watching the other drama, 不良之年清除师 Oh, now here comes trouble because a lot of actors overlap between these two dramas. I binged it in one day, and I'm pretty happy with this drama. I'll give it to go my rating. Quickly introduce you to what the story is, and then let's talk about as usual the good and bad. Pretty straightforward. We have a serial killer case, starting with body parts getting dumped in public places of women. Unfortunately, it's another specifically killing women drama. You have. Three main people who are leading this investigation in their different directions. One is a prosecutor in the story setting, played by Wu Kangren. The other is a very experienced mid-age, suffering from his own midlife crisis policeman, played by Tuo Zhonghua. Then a very young. Female reporter working for a television station, played by Jiang Yirong. Obviously, the case will get broken, and if you've read the original novel, you kind of already know what you're in for. Now, let's get into the specifics. First, the positive things. Number one, simple point. I highly appreciate all dramas from Taiwan. <laughs> original voice, no dubbing. And because those actors, I already am quite familiar with their voices. If they got dubbed, I would not be able to watch those dramas. This is a overall very realistic style of camera. If you're very familiar with Netflix Asia dramas, usually what they look like and feel like, this is another one that goes quite well with the other ones. Number two, as a crime drama, a serial killing case breaking drama, it's a pretty standard and acceptable one. There's no significant logic holes in the whole deduction process and finding out who is the real culprit process. It's step by step, very incremental, slowly. If you have super high standard and expectation, though, you may find this is slightly underwhelming. But then. At least we wouldn't suffer at things not making sense and not linking up and crash at the ending type of situation. Number three, probably the thing that's most important is the acting casting of the main roles. In the drama, it does have many very well known and <laughs> long established actor actresses who come in play supporting roles, not having that much screen time, but still functionally important in the story, such as Ke Jiayan and Lin Xinru. No need to introduce who they are. Then you also have the Main characters who have most amount of the screen time. In this case, it is mainly the male, the actors playing a couple of crucial roles in this drama that pulled me in with their performances. Namely, the male lead actor Wu Kangren, the other lead Tuo Zhonghua. Then, <laughs> because I've recently watched Oh No Here Comes Trouble, the actor. Yao Chunyao, who is the lion river god who barely speaks in the other drama, and very cute character in this one. Oh, he's so far away from that. And then the actor Fan Shaoxun, who also is in Oh No, Here Comes Trouble. It's mainly these four people's acting that pulled me in and anchored me in this story as it goes on. The breaking of the case almost becomes secondary because I enjoy their acting so much. For the role Yao Chunyao plays, who works in the same television station. As Lin Xinru's role works in, I'm very impressed with his acting. He has very good micro expression acting when it's very tight shot on his face, and he can control the tiny movement of his muscles to express his feelings. Also, Fan Shaoxun, who is the heartbreaking one in Here Comes Trouble. Oh, in this drama,、mm, not somebody that you want to actually to be friends with. As a drama reviewer, if you 
haven't watched either of those dramas, if you've watched one already, well, it's it's already done. But if you haven't, I would suggest watch Oh Now Here Comes Trouble first and then watch Copycat Killer later. Because if you reverse the order, it's gonna be rather hard for you to immediately get into Oh Now Here Comes Trouble with your impression of these two actors you know, still fresh in your mind and you jump into this one, ooh, it's gonna take a while. I'm just very impressed about their range and how convincing it can be. Being characters almost at the polar opposite of personality, character type of roles and functions of roles in the drama. Then for the other two actors, I want to first talk about Tuo Zhonghua. He is probably not so well known to very young audiences these days. He's been around for ages. I remember when I was very little, like I would actually use the word little. He was already working as the young actors of that time. My strongest impression of his performance to me was still the Qiong Yao drama that he led with Zhao Wenjun, Jiang Qingqing, and Zhu Yin. That one. Anybody has watched that one? I know after that he's done many other works, but my strongest impression of him is still in that drama. I always just think by default, he's that role. In this drama, obviously, he has aged a lot. He's now playing the midlife crisis guy. And I don't know, like, I watch his performance and it makes me think about the decades that have gone by between then and now. I really can feel the role he plays, the typical tired, not at his prime, his private life is a mess, he's not doing very well with his daughter. That typical failing almost at that age policeman row brings you the feel of weight of time and every time i look at his face i remember what he looks like when he was younger and the changes that have happened i almost cannot help feeling that strong empathy for his particular role as i was watching then the definite anchor of this drama is wu kang ren he also has been around for a long time although not as old as Tuo Zhonghua. Early days of Taiwan idol drama land things, uh, he's around in many dramas. For example, that drama that I've talked about and really like. He is a magical actor. First is he almost doesn't age across the decades if you look back at all his work in his portfolio. I mean, only cameras got better and more high definition. Therefore, you can see like more wrinkles and blemishes on people's skin, but really he hasn't aged. Body, shape-wise, the way he carries himself, voice, face hardly. Okay, is he a vampire? His acting aged with time so well. I mean, he's good to start with, but he's now is so good. As the time goes on, it becomes that I want to see his reactions, his own personal story in the whole investigation and what is going to become of him as a character instead of, say, finding out who did it and then put the culprit to his deserved punishment. He really held the drama together and there are a couple of really great scenes in this drama that he did that was like wow, emotional bomb. You will know when it happens towards the end of the drama. He is another actor I'd say who can just play anything and at polar opposite type of personality character function in the story and you believe it. Almost the moment he comes up. At the end of last year I think there's another Netflix series that he led with um, Xu, Xu Weining, shards of her drama, and he's a bad guy, and a jerk, and a horrendous person. And in that drama, almost the moment he shows up for the first second, you know he's not a good guy. And like he can convey that just by the way he holds himself and the way he looks at people. Obviously, with the help of makeup, hairstyle, all that, but oh, the vibe, like the things behind the actor's eyes, he can do it just by being in a different state almost. And looking at the camera and you know if he's playing the good guy of the story or the bad guy of the story and what type of good guy they are he, he's so accurate and i also love the fact that when he gets super emotional he's not out of control he is an actor who just knows exactly where to put that cap i want to bring it up to that level it's gonna be very effective for my audiences but just about there cannot tip over tip over it's gonna be bad he is the most important reason for me personally to be able to watch through this drama without interruption, binge it in one day and not feeling any regret and really would savor his performance after I've watched the whole thing. These are the positive points that I find in this drama and I think worth checking out at least a bit for you. Let's talk about the things that are not ideal and why I don't have a super high rating. Number one, as it is a crime drama, serial killer drama, if you are very sensitive, that's a warning uh, uh, to blood, body parts, torture, very gruesome things. This drama will have a lot of those imageries 
and sound, and it's not gonna shy away from brutality. There are a couple of scenes in this drama that are super brutal. Although it doesn't just like put the camera right on that moment of things happening, you're gonna hear it, okay? And it's very good sound effect. I put it on the negative just because I think it's gonna negatively impact certain people who cannot deal with these things. Point number two on the negative end, this drama slow burns. I'd say first one or two episodes, you really have to be patient sitting through it, and you're not actually gonna get to the juicy part of the story past midway point. Midway point, you kind of solved the case already, and you think it's all done, but it's not. The second half becomes even more exciting, so it really is a slow build, slow burn, and getting hotter and hotter drama. If you want a page turner, you want something that's like hit on your head from moment one, this drama would not be the best choice. The third point on the negative end, related to the positive point I've talked about, which is it's a qualified case-breaking drama, but that's just about it. In terms of the cases themselves, how it gets broken, you definitely have seen similar things in many other things previously. If you watch a lot of crime dramas, we do live in 2023 and there have been too many crime-breaking stories out there. Almost everything humans are capable of thinking of on screen in this genre has been done. Then the fourth point, I think probably the most important point, at least in my opinion, on the script writing level and looking at this drama as a work of visual commentary on human nature, okay? Because crime dramas always touches on the dark and the bad side of human nature. I can see the attempt trying to really elicit that and bring that out, but overall I don't think it has done a very good job. And I would argue a certain plot that happens in this drama, whether it's necessary. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same in the original novel. The straw that breaks the camel's back thing happening for our male lead character that makes him take that one step. I'm just wondering first is whether it's necessary. It's almost like forced to happen so that he would do this action and we can finally arrive at that discussion about justice and whether you should resolve that to your personal hands and methods of doing things. Also, if you think about logically how that thing can happen in the whole story, it almost makes the bad guy, the killer, too strong. There's no actually laying any clue previously of this bad person getting his ducks in a row to actually finally being able to put that on our male lead and make it happen. You don't actually see any of those previous preparation work of this bad guy. He kind of is magically can do all those things. So it kind of is a little bit too much creative license and power you give to the bad guy so that the good guy can react in a strong way. So if again, pulling the recent other drama that I've talked about, oh no, here comes trouble. That drama in compared to these two scripts, if we disregard that one is a crime drama, the other is a sort of urban legend mystery drama. If you look at how effective these two scripts are are at realizing their narrative goal, the core, the soul of the story, how effective these two dramas are at delivering that, I'd say, oh no, here comes trouble, did it much better, given crime dramas are really hard to do well. That would conclude my final review on the drama Copycat Killer, Mo Fang Fan. Hope that's useful for you to make up your mind about whether you should spend your time watching Netflix. One final thing I want to add on Netflix is, although Netflix has produced so many great dramas, you cannot argue with that, it's messing up with too many other people's stuff and I, I find it's really scary. Particularly what it's doing in South Korea and how terrible it is to the local film television making industry. If you've noticed in recent years, the series that got super popular globally that are Netflix Asia, Korean productions, if you do a little bit of research and see how bad the influence impact it has delivered to the local uh, industry of drama making in <laughs> South Korea, it's um, not a fan of that, okay? I'm a Chinese person. I grew up in a country that had a revolution that supposedly took down. But mm, let's argue whether that's like almost a default thing in human nature. And whenever it gets an opportunity, we just climb back and trying to get everything. Anyway, it's a bit rumbling at the end. If you get it, you get it. You don't get it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama.